Rebuilding a model steam plant. Part 3. Working on the yellow Stuart S50 steam engine, remachining the piston and fitting a silicone piston ring. The performance of this engine is transformed. This particular Stuart S50 was one of three sent to me by my customer in the USA and this is the one that was originally on the steam plant that I'm thinking about reworking. Here it is on my dining room table before I started working on it and it wasn't so good at this stage. It didn't feel good as you turned it over. The cylinder moved around and the crosshead guide bars were very loose. And the other thing is it's bright yellow. I don't think I like the idea of this. It would attract wasps. There's some damage to the paintwork on the cylinder that can be easily rectified. I think I would remove all the paint and start again. When I first received this engine, along with the other S50s, I gave them all a test run. And this one at the time ran worst of all. Which is hardly surprising as the cylinder is very loose. The following video clip that you're about to see is taken from my series Making a Stuart Model Steam Plant. And during this clip you can see the problem in more detail and you can also see the solution. I'm curious to see whether this engine runs at all with its loose cylinder and crosshead guides. This is not a good start even with the engine stationary air is blowing out of the exhaust. Currently I'm feeding the engine with 30 pounds per square inch of compressed air. This is not a good sign, it's not even trying. Here I've turned the engine over to tighten the bolts underneath. And yes, I know the screwdriver is a bit small, but I'm not putting a lot of pressure on, so it shouldn't be a problem. By nipping up the three machine screws, the cylinder is now more rigidly mounted. I've turned up the air pressure to 50 pounds per square inch, and now I think it's going to go. Here I'm checking the valve timing, which is pretty good at both ends. But there is still a problem of the engine not running. And initially, the cause of this problem is not obvious. I turned up the air pressure a little bit more. Time to try again. This is at about 60 pounds per square inch and the engine is running, but not very well. The good news is though, the flywheel is perfectly true. Maybe not on the inside edge, but definitely on the outside edge. The further increase of the air pressure made the engine go a little bit faster. But there's no power at all. I think it's time to have a look inside the steam chest. Firstly I disconnect the airline and then I take off the steam chest cover. So I can have a look at the valve. And here it is. The port face isn't scored and the slide valve is timed perfectly. At this stage, while I was having a quick think about the job, I thought it would be a good idea to tighten up the crosshead slide bars. The slide bar gap spacers are too short, so when I tighten the bolts holding the guide bars in place, the guide bars acted as a clamp, and it was impossible to turn the engine over. At least the slide valve looks okay, so I'll re-tighten the steam chest cover and give it another run. There are some drain cocks fitted at the other side and they're really big and ugly and were really designed for a model steam locomotive. I don't know what the threads are on these drain cocks but they do not match the holes that are in the cylinder. I've made sure that both of the drain cocks are fully shut but the engine is still feeble. And when I stop the engine the compressed air is just being blown straight to exhaust. On the steam plant that I'm going to be building the S50 will be driving a generator and at the moment there is nowhere near enough power available at the flywheel. The time has come to have a look at the piston inside the cylinder. After slackening all the bolts using a spanner, I'm using a small socket to remove them. And so they don't get lost, I put them all in a small red plastic box. In order to remove the piston from the cylinder, I need to unscrew it from the crosshead. That's why I've removed the crosshead guides so I can undo the lock nut. There is a slot in the piston, and this is a good thing, or it would be if my screwdriver fitted it. But it doesn't, because the slot is very thin. Usually when I make pistons for miniature steam engines, I just drill a couple of holes, and then use a pair of circlip pliers to remove the piston. This piston wasn't tight, and I removed it using a very small screwdriver. 
I unscrewed the lock nut from the end of the piston rod, so now I can withdraw the piston and have a look at it. Wait for it, wait for it, yes, here it is. And someone has machined a slot in the piston for an o-ring, which is a great idea if you remember to fit the o-ring. Normally, Stuart pistons in models of this size don't use piston rings, they just have oil grooves. And in this clip, you can see the remains of the oil grooves at either side of the large groove in the centre. Time to look in my box of steam grade silicone o rings to find a suitable o ring to fit the piston. The bore of the cylinder is 5 eighths of an inch, and I could not believe it, I do not have a silicone o ring in my collection which is 5 eighths of an inch outside diameter. As a temporary measure, I've stretched a half inch o ring into the gap, but it's too big to fit in the cylinder. Which means that the groove in the piston is not deep enough. That's quickly remedied by going over to the boxwood lathe and using a very thin parting tool to make it a bit deeper. A bit of information when you use O rings as piston rings. You must use a silicone piston ring or a Viton piston ring with exactly the same diameter as the diameter of the cylinder. If the groove in the piston isn't deep enough and puts pressure on the O ring, pushing it too hard against the wall of the cylinder, it will prematurely wear out. You can find out all you need to know about clearances for O-rings by just googling O-ring clearances or something similar. Now I've machined this groove a little bit deeper, the piston pushes into the cylinder and you wouldn't know there was an O-ring there. I've refitted the lock nut and here I'm just locking the piston rod against the crosshead, without exerting excessive pressure on the parts. If you look at these crosshead guides, you will see two things that are wrong. One is, the spacers are too wide and look stupid, and the spacers are too short, because when you tighten the bolts, everything locks solid. I intend to make four new spacers that are the perfect length for the job. Temporarily though, I'm just inserting washers so I can test the engine. Now with the piston ring fitted, the engine runs a lot better, and I'm having to apply a lot of pressure to the flywheel, to put a load on the engine. It is knocking a bit because the crosshead's loose, but that's not a problem, I'll fix that in due course. The main thing is that there's plenty of power and the beats are very even. This was the best of the three S50s that were sent to me by my customer in the USA, but then he contacted me and asked me, since I'd fixed it, could I send him it back? And when I was speaking to him via FaceTime, he was telling me that he wanted to put this engine back on the steam plant from whence it came. But I don't think that worked out as planned for my customer. Instead, he sent me all of the parts for this large steam plant. And all he's asked me to do is just rebuild it and make a video about it. Which is what I will be doing after I finish the one for him. This S50 is one of the steam engines that was originally on the baseboard and here I'm fitting the drain cocks. These cylinder drain cocks were originally fitted with long pieces of very thin tubing to carry the water away from the cylinder when they were opened. One of the long pieces of tubing fell off the drain cock and on the other one I had to cut it off. Here you can see the soft solder on the end of the drain cocks. I'm not going to use these, they're just not good enough. Instead I will fit a new set and I will not be fitting the long extension pipes. I'm just going to give the engine a quick run to see how it performs with the drain cocks fitted. At this moment in time I haven't even decided whether to use this steam engine on the big steam plant. I have one or two other ideas up my sleeve. This engine, a Stuart S50, and the other engine, a Stuart No. 10, seem to be very small steam engines for such a massive baseboard. So I'm having a think about this. And during this thinking period, I would like to say, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.